What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the A Show with the Kings, the Pro Wrestling Podcast. I am Justin, here with Meals. This has to be like the 150th time I've said, I am Justin, here with Meals. 150th? I feel yeah, like you've said it more. I don't think I did it like our first 100. I don't know. I I, I mean, somebody who's I listening. Feel like, I feel like you have. Like I feel like at this point, it's just something you say and you don't even think about it. Because most time, and clearly I don't think about it either because I usually have nothing to say um, <laughs> after it. I don't think about it enough, but... Listen, a good intro is a good intro, man. We gotta, you got to bring a good intro. You got to bring something that makes people feel familiar. And that's what, when I do that, when I start the episode, I'm like, oh, what the fuck am I going to say? Like, uh, Justin's not here. It's the first thing I say. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but nonetheless, um, how you feeling? How's everything? We're at the, we're finally in August. So summer's about to be over. Um, how have you felt about summer thus far? How about that? Summer's been fine. I, I, you know, summer don't mean nothing no more. You know what I'm saying? When you, when you're, when you're an adult, it don't mean nothing. That's a hot take, but also, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, working constantly, summer definitely meant something when you're a kid and you don't have to do shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, except maybe your parents would make you do something like, have you, have, has your parents ever made you like go to summer camp or get a no. job or? Cost too much no. money. Cost too much money. I used to go to summer camp, not like away summer camp. Like there's a school down the street that's having a summer camping, feeding us breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the entire day. Stay there for eight hours. Summer camp. Um, so I used to do that during the summer. But then after that, yeah, I really didn't do anything. And my dad would always be like, you have to do something over the summer. But he would never like come up with an idea for anything. <laughs> And that's probably why I don't know how to swim, didn't know how to drive, um, all these other basic things that you learn in the summer. But also, I haven't been to a beach in a long time. I need Stop. to go to a beach. Beach is ass. Beach is ass. Listen, the beach is beaches ass. Beaches are ass? Is this... Go ahead. I hate, I hate the beach. I hate it. You, you get sand all over yourself and then your car. Uh, you, you, you get sand in your ass crack. You get sand on your balls. You get sand everywhere. The water ain't that warm. Let me just be clear. It's it's not cool. I'm give me a pool any day. The the, mm. the beach sucks. The beach fucking sucks. All right. I hate the beach. You'll never see me there. Okay. Wow. Okay. All right. Never knew that. I haven't been to a beach in a long time. I haven't even been to a pool in a long time. But bodies of water, I felt like I needed a body of water like two summers ago and uh, didn't get to accomplish it. But maybe I still got time this year. You know, the summer's not over. But yeah. I don't know. It's, it's We're getting close. So maybe I need to figure this shit out. Do you used to get <laughs> sad when it hit August 1st and you'd be like, damn, I just got out in June. I was telling my wife the other uh, yesterday, like, is this around the point where like, you would get sad, like you'd be like, "Damn, we!" I feel like we just got out on summer vacation. We didn't really even get to do anything. So, when did your school end? When did your school year usually end? Always around June the the fifteenth. Okay, the New York City public school ends at the end of June, like literally, like before July Fourth weekend. That's when it ends, and summer school starts literally after July Fourth weekend. <laughs> so it's like prison for all the kids who didn't care to actually go to school during the actual yeah. year yeah. um so when it hits august and it's really like you've only really had like one month of summer and you go out and there's back to school sales and your parents are asking you like what are you gonna wear to school what do we need to get for school all this other stuff like school talk just in general is a bummer um i don't know i just like this summer was hot as hell which is the probably the worst thing about the summer. It was fucking hot. Um, however, I felt like I don't know. I I enjoy the summer more than like winter. Yeah, uh, that's probably it. Just winter. <laughs> well, well, winter, winter was kind of ass for us this year. It was actually cold. Like I have no clue. I have no clue. Like we what? didn't get snow, which is a which should have been a signifier about this summer. <laughs> That's fine. That's good though. I mean, it's good, but we gonna we all gonna burn to a crit. Have you seen the news reports? We're out of global warming and we're into global boiling. Yeah, 
it's boiling. I was like, bro, we are going to die the wildest death ever. And you know that we're living longer now because, like, we've got, like, you know, we're better educated about health and stuff. So, like, I know for sure me and you are going to be doing this podcast until we're, like, 88 years old. But, like, nah, I mean, if we make it there, it is, it's going to be, like, average 117 degrees every summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I mean... Listen, this is this is what the this is what the government and the people in charge, those old fucking fossils, have done for us. You know what I'm saying? I hate to get super political here, but fuck these motherfuckers. They're about 80, 90 years old, about to die anyway, and they want us to die too. Fuck them. Yo, em. get political with it. You know what I'm saying? Get political. What's this man's name that that buffered out in front of the stage? Um, uh, that old white dude that just like started like thinging in front of the stage. Oh my god, old political. Oh, uh, M- 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 uh, McConnell. <laughs> yeah, 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 boys started buffering. The, go- the global boiling started boiling his shit. <laughs> Yo, he's cooked. I'm like, bro, we gotta get these old politicians out of here. But I don't know. I don't know. Fuck it. Fuck it. Um, oh God. I want to thank everybody. Uh, for uh, what happened, Mills? You good? Oh, it's probably no. I'm. I- I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Don't worry. Probably one of the Rough Riders came through. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I wanna. I I really wanna thank everybody for all the support and all the love for our new uh, the way that we do the show now. A lot of people were really like, we love the the new way you guys do the show. Uh, we love the point by point. Um, they they love the way that it feels kind of like first take ish or part of the interruption ish. Uh, I like it too. I have I have I have a lot more fun. Uh, kind of picking out what we're gonna talk about uh, every week now. So that's cool. I love it too. I think it gives us a lot more, a lot less struck. I mean, it's just, I mean, whatever. It's the street. I don't know what to do. Um, but yeah, it just allows us a little bit more, you know, latitude to talk about things and uh, just getting out of our system. You know what I'm saying? Like incorporating something new. We got to switch it up. It's 300 episodes. Like, let, uh, let's switch it up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. So um, what we are going to do, though, is as we talk about this uh, new way we do the show, <laughs> we're going to leave you guys right now because we got to go to Patreon and talk about Office mm. Out. Because it's spicy you know, enough that it's put on Patreon, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> we not trying to lose our jobs. Um, <laughs> I know I'm not. We're going to go over to uh, Patreon really quick. And, you know, if you guys don't have Patreon, what the hell are you waiting for, bro? What, what are you waiting for? We've got some new stuff coming up uh, imminently in the fall, at least. Uh, some new segments, some new things we're going to do with the, with the gang, with the crew. We had a really good meeting uh, last week about it. And we all seem to be coming through with, with some, some really cool ideas. So if you don't have our Patreon, $5 down, you get to listen to all of our Patreon-only segments like Office Hours and whatever I think of <laughs> on the day. Uh, and yeah, we'll be right back on uh, the A-Show right after this. All right, Meals, another week in pro wrestling big hey, show summer slam week yeah yes sir yeah. summer slam week uh but i want to start i want to start with some other things before we get to summer slam a couple points that i wanted to bring up this week of course mm. uh all in uh, six thousand tickets away from a complete sellout in wembley with only three weeks to go um what what about the build could excite you for this show right now? What 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 could they do right now to give you some excitement? What matches could they could they give you to be like, oh, this is going to be uh, more than you know just a regular show? Because right now, Mills, we're not going to lie to you. Chris Jericho versus Will Ospreay does not incite any type of excitement. For me. <laughs> That's an interesting. I mean, that might have been. I don't know. I guess Will Ospreay wasn't in the place in 2018, 19 to really be kind of like having those kind of things. Cause I was like, eh, maybe it would have been a little bit more enticing if Jericho was fresh, but like the last couple of years I've seen of Jericho. Ugh. Um, it seems like they're trying to go for the Jericho, Kenny Omega, uh, Russell kingdom kind of feel, but you got to realize that Chris Jericho is like eight years younger or older now than he was then probably. Yeah. More. And then also it's like, I don't think we need to do a one-to-one, career thing with kenny and um and will osprey like let osprey kind of like really figure out his own process but nonetheless um what would they have to do to excite me they would have to do a lot of things to excite me i'm not easily i think this company just just judging based off of how they booked their 200th episode and how they're trying to sell us on that 
AEW original John Moxley is going up against some two dudes. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, legitimately, the way they book things to me, they go for the like the idea of like this match will bang instead of like this moment will be fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so currently, right now. A great proposition would be, I think, what I proposed on Twitter, which is like the easiest thing. Um, By the way, to, they're not doing it. They're not doing it, but go ahead. No, they're, they're clearly, I mean, clearly not doing it. Um, I said do Punk versus Ricky Starks and also MJF versus Adam Cole at whatever, all out or all in. And then have the next world title match a week after. But they're not going to fucking do that because they're stupid. <laughs> so we get <laughs> Punk versus Ricky on a week where Summer's... Oh, good Lord. Um, what would they do to... A big-time main event. I mean, currently, the big-time... The one person that could excite me with any kind of like match he's in is currently injured, which is Brian Danielson. Could he? Just, after the match that he went out on? <laughs> I would still be, I have a lot of like trust and faith in Brian Danielson still okay. as a wrestler. Okay. So it's like injury or not, I still have a lot of trust and faith in him that he can go in the ring. Um, all the other tough guy shit that they do, I'm not really a fan of, but I know that he can go in the ring. So if they put him in a situation like, let's say, I don't know how this would shake out in 2023, but Danielson versus Punk. Mm hmm. That could get me excited because I think both of those guys are top-notch workers and understand the benefit of a moment versus the actual match because they have had moments that have superseded, that have told the stories of their career, that have changed the narrative of their career, and they understand that more than like, let's go out and have a five-star match that they're going to rate five stars on cage side or cage match or whatever the fuck it is. <sighs> But there's not a lot that they can do with the company. I don't think they have a lot of great combinations. And I think they realize now that the combinations have run dry, so they don't really want to re-rock them. So now we're getting the shitty end of the stick. Um, what could, in theory for you, make you excited about this Wembley show? How a about real, that? A real card. <laughs> like a, 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 a real card. I, I, I think that... Something I've seen online lately is that, um, and again, what's happening right now with with AEW kind of being hobbled in, in a lot of ways in terms of just like public perception and ratings or whatever, like, is that a lot of people are comparing the fact that WrestleMania goes on sale and sells out with no card. However, we're not waiting until April or March 31st to see what that card will be, right? Like, we're not waiting that long. We know, like, people are buying WrestleMania based on the name factor. People mm -hmm. are buying in Wembley for many factors, including the name factor, but also because they don't get many wrestling events at Wembley. So there's going to be AEW fans going. There's going to be WWE fans going. There's going to be just general people that are just going to walk up and go, right? I think that there's very big differences as to what that is and how other companies do it. The thing that AEW is doing is saying, we're not going to announce a card because we've already sold out 70K and people are going to just rock with it anyway. Whereas people with common sense are like, we actually need something to be, in, you know, we're not going to be in London. There, there's like certain things, meals that we don't even know yet. Three weeks out, we don't know how we're going to be able to order it. We don't know how much it's going to cost. We well, they, they announced, they they finally announced that you'll know how to order it. I think it'll be on DirecTV and Comcast um, for pay-per-view for $50. At uh, at what, 12 o'clock? Or, or yeah, 12 o'clock, I think. Right? 3 p.m. in the afternoon. <laughs> p.m. in the afternoon you know what i mean like it, it's it, it it's a very and the thing is you know it's going to go long it's going to be about six hours you know so like they're banking on the moment which they've already gotten the moment but i think that again how is this reflecting or reflective of of, of like i said last week a company that really knows what the fuck's going on or, or what they're doing like there's no card to, to to think of like What's the women's match is going to be? What are the tag matches going to be? Is Kenny? But gonna... I never. They they always know like the top two big ones they want to do, and then they figure the shit out later. Like I'm, Tony doesn't like think of things through, or he doesn't have an actual team, right? So he doesn't have like a full creative team or a team of writers and stuff like that. I mean, it all funnels through him at the end of the day. So there's I, it from me from kind of like what I gather. 
there aren't that many parallel teams working on various different things. Now, I think currently what we have in a you know in a strong pro, well not I don't know strong is how you thing it. But the Punk and Starks things is going on. The MJF Adam Cole thing is going on. I think those are the only two surefire things that are like going on leading into Wembley that may have some sort of ramifications on this show. Other than that, he has done nothing with the mid card. The tag team champions have, you know, unless they're going to face Big Bill and Roy Guy at the show, there's nothing going on there. Um, it's just to me, it's a, it's a, it's a person who lacks vision, and ultimately, we're just going to pop you with the matches. Like we're just going to book a card. We're not going to create a moment. We're not going to, um, you know, create an experience. You're just going to get a card that's booked for you, that you can watch at three p.m. on a Saturday. Full of full of match of the career. Or full of match of the year contenders you know what i mean like that's that's really what they go for and it works you know what i'm saying and and it's been working i i i don't think i could be invested in a car that has no like so like you look at the SummerSlam card a lot of these things uh i mean save for like maybe ronda and shayna have been being built for months at this point right like these are these are i mean in some cases years some of these matches are but like that's that's our investment in AEW. That's why I find it hard to get into the show because there is no real investment that I have in any of these characters because they just go like last week on Dynamite. They had a whole big blood and guts match. They've broken apart and it seems as though they have no direction for any other people. In that There's match. no yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's nuts to me. Like that's lack of vision. And to be honest with you, it's because of the lack of stories that you ultimately. I can't. I want to pick an AEW fan and I want to say double or nothing. 2020. What happened on that show? You couldn't tell yourself. I I couldn't in my mind fathom what happened on that show. I can look back at it and be like, oh, okay. But I can also be like, yo, that happened. Like, let me look at it. AEW double or nothing 2020, even if it it did exist. Um, Did it? What the fuck happened? Yeah, it did. A stadium stampede match. John Moxley versus Brody Lee. Cody versus Lance Archer. What the fuck? (laughs) MJ versus Jungle Boy, which I had no idea. These matches, Dustin versus Sean Spears. Good lord, they're in hell. Um, yeah, hey, they they called it one of the best pay per views of all time. I, I'm, listen, I'm sure. Create a moment, jeez, do something. Like just do something, please. Like the matches can't sell you, and there need to be someone yelling in this man's face. I mean, he a billionaire, so he controls your checks, so you're not gonna yell that loud. But you need to understand, like Punk Cannon did. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Punk can do whatever he want. That that's his company too. This is my shit too. Hey man, how do you feel about the? the real world championship thing. How do you feel about that angle? It's the first important thing that's ever happened on collision. In it's six corny. weeks. It's corny, but they needed it. Uh, I, I think that again, you, you, you can't have that. And I'm pretty sure they're going to do some type of work shoot thing, but it's like, you can't have that and not explain why that is the reason why things are what they are. You know what I'm saying? He has come back. He has not even said if he was injured or not. You know what I'm saying? Like he has not even said, "Hey, this is why I was I was gone" or whatever. Well, well, here's, well actually, well, the thing with Punk is that he actually wasn't suspended, right? He was just clearly still just off on the injury. But it's like they haven't addressed that part either. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's just they just moved on and there was a new champion. You know what I mean? Like that. I I think that that is just again a short sighted storytelling. Um, even if you don't want to talk about the fucking brawl out thing, I was in Siberia for 16 weeks or whatever the fuck you want to say. You know what I mean? Like I I, I think that. The real world champion thing, it's going to lead obviously back to Punk and MJF. And then Meals, and then what? After that's over, then what? They, they built a, a one major thing, and then, and then what? That, that's it. I don't know. Two pay per views, two weeks in a row. God bless him. I just know he's going to be in his big fire pro wrestling bag. <laughs> With the way these matches about to be generated, because <laughs> it's about to be stupid. They got nothing going on with the women. I've never seen this before. I've never seen it like a bunch of injuries. So he just threw plans out the window because niggas is injured, and there's nobody like, 
there's nobody with enough heat to kind of counteract that. Like, I'm sure the car is going to come together this week and next week. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm quite sure of it. I'm, I'm pretty sure people would get what they want uh, out of out of all of these things, all, all of these things. And uh, they'll, they'll be happy with their Kenny Omega matches and stuff like that. And they'll 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 pop for it. But I, I just can't. I, I've never seen a pay-per-view feel like like in Wembley feel as though it's going to be like a C tier pay-per-view other than the fact that there's going to be a lot of people going. Mm. they just started talking about it punk was the first person to actually mention this shit like and, and, and he was uh, like i can't believe i'm the first person to mention this <laughs> he's insane for even saying oh. that right? oh i love collision um <laughs> I, I know i know but no i mean it's a it's a problem that this company has and they constantly have it. They're going to tout the success of this show nonetheless. So you can expect the like the parade of like, we sold this many tickets and we broke the record, but at what cost is going to be when realistically the next pay-per-view kind of like does really nothing or the, the attendance isn't up in the U S or like all these other things. Like you eventually got to go back home. They're crying about them. Um, uh, WWE come to Chicago for Survivor Series, and they're like, "We're still gonna hold our events in Chicago." And it's like, "All right, fine," but realistically, like, good luck. Uh, good the, luck. The way this company how how is hot. Good luck. Um, Britt Baker, we got to get on her too. Mm. Baker had a had a had a week last week uh, on Dynamite. Had a match with Ty Valkyrie. Went about as well as you would expect. Uh, a mm-hmm. lot of people not big fans of that match if you will um i i don't want to come down too hard on the ladies here okay they don't get much time on these shows as is um brick came out for like a squash one uh, week before brillet and guts and then she came out for this match against taya some there was some clear miscommunication issues it happens it happens with the men too oh yeah it yeah it happens it happens for sure but I think the reaction has made it worse. She's kind of she's kind of put herself in the crossfire, uh, responding to uh, trolls on Twitter. Um, you know, going at them. Listen, you make thousands of dollars, bro. And I say this to any wrestler, not just you. <laughs> I've met you said thousands of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you come home with the same check I do. Listen, you don't see me responding to all these trolls. <laughs> let's let's just call a spade a spade here man like it just makes no sense that she had to go this hard and she did the same thing with the t-shirt thing where it's like she's got to respond to every single thing that goes on thus making the issue way bigger than it had to be right where it's just like now people are going to start dunking on you and then people started because of that match people have brought up and found again they're all the internet's always going to find a way they're going to find some shit that you said you know what i'm saying that that was like off the off the beaten path so to speak when she talked about wwe hiring uh athletes and not indie people anymore she said you know i don't feel like people could could learn this stuff in a warehouse or some shit like that uh and then she responding to a, a parody account by the way a vince mcmahon parody account uh, at that um says that oh i made these comments when when wwe made a statement about not hiring indie wrestlers anymore and you know i was doing i made i said that to support indie wrestling and of course people dug up those comments that wwe said and they never officially said that they weren't sending <laughs> indie people anymore and again it seems like she either misread or was going off of again internet uh uh conjecture and she just dug herself another hole. Does she not not ask you meals? Does she need to stay off the, the uh, social media? She does, but she's not going to. I think there's a large um, part of it where she has the ego because she is the top girl in AEW. And she also feels like she is one of the top acts in AEW just in general. Um, that kind of like goes with a lot of the things that she says and why she's defending herself. But realistically, I feel like, one, she's my most overrated wrestler for two years running. For a reason, she we might have to name the award after her. To be honest with you, the Britt Baker <laughs> Most Overrated Wrestler of the Year Award. We might have to name the award after her because she's going for a third. To be real with you, <laughs> the second part about this is 
let the work speak for yourself. Do the work and you won't ever have to get to this point where you have to defend yourself in this manner. There was, there's been so much conjecture online about, again, and we've talked about this for years, uh, people saying, you guys don't even support the women. How could you put up these signs and say better women big booking when you don't support the women? And it's ultimately, again, it's not our responsibility to care. We only care about the things that you feel like makes important. We only care about the things that you make feel important. That's the only thing that we can invest in. Or if the characters are important themselves. So this whole narrative about how um, we don't care about women's matches and all this other stuff. Everything on the other side of the coin flies in the window. Except apparently last night where people got in their feelings about what what's going to happen and what's not going to happen on SummerSlam. But... <laughs> I think Britt just needs to. <laughs> I don't know what Britt needs to do, man. She's <laughs> she's perfectly fine with the way that she is, according to her. I think she is no. I don't know. She's just to me. I don't get. If you whack, I don't see why you got to talk all this crap. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I was. I was. I was hoping you. I wanted you to get there. Like you're. You're I'm just like if you're. If you're this. Like why do you? How do you have any room to say this? Like Bro, any. What are you defending? She dead. I said. I. I heard. I, all I heard was DMD chants. Not. Not all of y'all on the internet or some shit like that. And I'm just like, come on. You're not even doing it better than Baron Corbin's doing it right now when you're responding to trolls, man. That's like what I'm this- saying. People would cheer for stuff. Don't get me wrong, but that don't mean you good. We've cheered for a lot of things that aren't good. I've seen people cheering for Otis in 2020. Now, Otis is currently where he's supposed to be. That's why I haven't said anything bad about Otis for you. <laughs> <laughs> Otis is fine where he is at. Much, better, Baker. much better than Tucky. Uh, I don't even know what happened, <laughs> boy. Tucky sell, he... Tucky sell insurance. Listen, God bless. Um, she might be better at being a dentist than she being a wrestler. Is all I'm gonna say about that. Is she? I would hope so. I would hope so. I mean, I ain't see a lot of yuck mouth people walking around these streets. So she, hopefully, she is better at being a dentist than being a wrestler. I'm saying this because I feel like the the the, the level of talk is not mess is not proportional to the level of skill. I think like, Tony. I think Tony needs to have a social media mandate in his company. I think that's ultimately where I stand on this. I think but, people are way too fly at the mouth. They're way too fly at the mouth in that company on social media. I, I think they need to have a mandate, not a mandate, but more so like social media guidelines where you're not wilding out on there all the time. And I know it's because you saw because you saw you saw the little Miss Corey Jade while out on social media and deleted that shit quick. <laughs> exactly. Because they have social media guidelines and it's 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 a it's all a part of media training. Nobody in AEW is media trained. Nobody in AEW is media trained. And the NXT people are are, I'm pretty sure they skip that class every day <laughs> when when it's time to talk about media training and and media visibility. Like it, they it, saw what happened to Quincy and said, you know what, I'm gonna chill. They put Quincy <laughs> under the PC, you know, like it, 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 he's not even seen anymore, bro. Like it 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 is time for them to get some type of social social media literacy or guidelines or training on how they're supposed to handle these things. You, this company has the most scrutiny of, of any company not named WWE right now. It is not cool to be going after trolls, you know, flashing all that shit. And I say that to, I said that to Cora Jades and I mean, Matt Riddle just put up a crazy ass post about, oh, bro, it's easier to win a fight in UFC than WWE. I'm like, bro, this is why niggas don't like you. This is why you job in the Kaiser. That shit has, that shit shook me on Raw this week when he lost to Kaiser. It ain't shake me because this nigga's been a loser for months. <laughs> he came back a loser. That's that's like losing to Akira Tozawa at this point. They had a lot of, they put a lot behind Matt Riddle. He beat Seth Rollins almost a year ago. He beat him. Yes, man. They ain't He's- gonna do that to Brit. They ain't gonna do that to Brit though, because they 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 believe. 
that in this division, which they, in their eyes, doesn't have a lot of stars anyway, she is the lone star. And I think that's a huge mistake. I think it's a huge, huge mistake. And then also for little Miss Britt Baker, I think if you're in WWE, you wouldn't have. You'd be right there with J.C. Jane and them. <laughs> we got J.C. Jane at home. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, can, they can rock out with a toxic attraction with Britt Baker. That would be hard. Hey, man. You got J.C. Jane at home, baby. I don't need a Britt Baker. It looks good. I mean, I I, I think it would look good with with, with uh, Britt Baker leading a toxic attraction. She could, she could, I mean, hey, Gigi Dolan could probably teach her some things. Speaking of speaking of those people, NXT Good Lord. NXT at a at a pay per view from Texas. I love the way they're lining up the Texas dates and all of the dates of the uh, NXT shows to line up with main event shows, or not main event main roster shows because there's going to be talent going back and forth there. I think that's a really really nice idea. No Mercy is going to do that in September also from Bakersfield, and that's during WWE's California loop. So I thought that was. Are you cool. heading to Bakersfield? Absolutely not, my brother. This <laughs> field is, let, let me tell you, it's breaking bad <laughs> in California. <laughs> Literally, I am not going to Bakersfield. It's not safe for people like me out there. Uh uh-uh. uh, no, sir. I'm not doing God that. God bless. Shit. God, God bless. God bless the, the talent of color in NXT going to Bakersfield because that, that shit ain't cool. And it's right in the desert, too. It's going to be hot as hell uh, mm. that weekend. But um, NXT Great American Bash live in, live from Texas. Uh, I want to I want to I want to get through this really quick. But we had some really cool topics to, to come out of that. Um, what was your match of the night for for Great American Bash? There was only one. There was really I mean, there's a second one, but it's still like be a, that main event was a main event like that. That main event told a story. I admired more so than anything how much it told a story. It told a story of Carmelo literally have, he's in the fight of his life trying to survive. And he also has to become tough to be able to win this match. So mm-hmm. he put everything that he had to win this match. Now the ending was the ending. <laughs> um, but I think overall, in terms of what this match does for Carmelo, it takes him up another level. I think um, his now he need to work on his chops because you in the ring with Dragon <laughs> Ilya, yeah. Ilya chop you and his look like slaps, <laughs> like I baby gotta, slaps. <laughs> I got to respect that he took that punishment from uh, Dragunov and his chest was looking beat red. I ain't never Ooh. seen a black man chest. I was going to make a root joke, but I decided oh, as Titus would say, call the police. Oh my god! Uh, but listen, it, it was it was an incredible. That that'll also be my match of the of the night as well. But I gotta I gotta send like a special shout out to that triple threat match in terms of just being the storyline main rosterist match that they have ever <laughs> kind of. I feel had. like that was the that was the attraction of the show. Like, yeah, that was the true attraction of the show. It looked. It looked really, really awesome the way that they portrayed and they had. It reminds me of like a, the way an Eddie Guerrero match would have went with the with the with the subversions of how people were going to win or not. And mm-hmm. I got to give extra shouts out to them making Wesley look like a top guy in this match in terms of how much punishment he took, how many good spots that he took. He got up from a riptide on the table. Mm. and still managed to get that you know what i'm saying like and 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 extra shout out to to rhea ripley as well for being kind of a catalyst i know a lot of people have a lot of complaints as to how she's portrayed with the women and men but i think there's no other character like her in this company right it was like she is able to mix it up with every single person in the company and it looks legitimate every single time and i think that's that's the most awesome part about her and that's what makes her special and i and i don't get how people don't see that is that like she is special because she is able to. She's such a badass that she's able to cross the line back and forth, and they make it make sense every single time, in my opinion. And I think, in terms of like her relationship with Dom, it is her kind of propping up Dom so that she can, you know, say like there's a there's a level of parasocialism to that uh to to that relationship, but also a level of like Dom is completely subservient to her, so she has to kind of do what she has to do to keep him on her side. And I thought that that mm-hmm. was that, that was what the uh, finish was like to me to that match. I, I thought it was just a stellar match. 
bet- between Ali, Wesley, and uh, and Dom Mysterio. I thought so as well. I thought it was a really good match. Um, but with but with Dom, I wanted I wanted to know because it looks it looks to me like he's going to be on NXT for quite some time. He's going to be there for a while. He's going to be getting his right. reps in. Um, do you think he helps or hurts NXT? Um, I think it helps from a standpoint of a visibility. We have the most, well, the overheal in the building. You have someone who get, garners a genuine reaction and it kind of like continues to build towards that. I think as an attraction, it definitely works. Um, where I could see it hindering NXT, um, I mean, it's a slot that's taken up, but to be honest with you, not a lot of people ready on this show. Not a lot. Like, and not a lot of people have positioned themselves the way Dom has positioned themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a he he can be argued as legitimately. I look on this card at the heels. I don't know who the baddest motherfucker on NXT is. I really don't. It's probably it's Braun. I, I guess it's Braun. It's Braun. It's Braun after Dom. Or or it's it's, it's Dom after Braun. Um but again, they seem to be winding Braun down and using him to get other baby faces over, which he should be doing at this point. He beat everybody yeah. <laughs> for two years in a row. He should be taking some some L's now, and I think that's completely fine. But um, I actually think that Dom could could potentially hurt NXT in some ways. In some ways, this is a take. This is a take. Please, I I, think, I I love Dom the character on the main roster because he is set beside so many other bigger people that uh, could also garner that um, attention and he could help. He, he helps judgment day stay heel. Like, like full stop. He helps judgment day stay heel with the way that he's received every single week. And I think that with NXT, it is such a bigger, it's such a, such a, such a bigger character on that show that I feel like people will just be looking to boo him and it'll make other heels look weak by comparison. Now, if he was working with other heels on the, on, on the show, but that would be tough to do because they're not on Judgment Day. But like, if he worked with other heels on the show, that would help them and help their their stature, so to speak. But I think that making Dom kind of the biggest heel there, the biggest shit, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, cowardly heel on the show, it's kind of, it flies in the face of Melo because it's like, why don't you just go after Melo? You know what I mean? And I I, I love the fact that he's getting reps with with people who are like really good as in, in, in Wesley. And we see Dom get better every single week in terms of just little things that he does. But I think he could actually hurt the brand and being like, there's other heels they're trying to get over. They're trying to get Baron Corbin over as a heel again. Like they're trying to get all these people to, to you know, trying to get these people going again. And I think that could be a real problem uh, in the long run, the longer he stays. But I think, I think the reason why he doesn't go for Melo is because one, they can't have Melo lose and nor do they want Melo really beating Dom. I think Wesley was one who as a face, you could believably say can take that L to Dom and it makes Dom a much bigger heel. And it also puts Wesley in a position that he fights back more as a face. Like he has that build, that kind of like story going into that Um, because he's, he's transformed completely. I think Wesley from where he started in his title reign to where it kind of like ended, he's a completely, he's on a completely different level. I think with Dom not going against Carmelo, I mean, we've seen him go against Finn and kind of lose. You don't even want to put that in the kind of like position even in the air that he may lose because Quite frankly, Judgment Day should be winning a lot, and they are. And they do. <laughs> um, so I can't see Dom as NXT champion because you still kind of need that attraction on that show to continue to like build up these other stars, like the Ilya Dragon off. Like, where would that match be? I mean, if they put Dom in that match, <laughs> Dom would have got his ass whooped, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but but you want to see it and and I, right. and I and i think that like you know as they as they kind of figure out what they want to do with the main roster integration and again i don't have many complaints about it like i think that i, I saw some some people mad that like Rhea wasn't healing on lyra lyra valkyrie a lot and i was like well for what you know what i'm saying like i i think that more than just she being don't hate her what is, she don't <laughs> hate her yeah she doesn't necessarily see lyra on her level but it doesn't mean that she has to like shit on everybody that's a good guy i think that Rhea having a protege that doesn't exactly align with her views that's like some anime shit that's like that's shit that would happen hey man you don't have to tell me that 
Exactly. Like I, I think that it all makes sense. I just, I just wonder, and I get worried about the reception that Dom will get the longer that he stays on the show. And I'll have to see how they, how they shake this out. But it seems to me that Wesley is going to move on from the U.S. Uh, the North American title. Sorry, um, after he got pinned um, on Sunday. So that, I think that's a good move for him. Mm. I want to see him against Dom one on one. I mean, Ali can get out the way for sure. I just felt like if they were gonna if they were gonna get Ali out the way that they, they would have pinned Ali. I think that might actually be continuing on. I feel like I I don't know I don't know I feel like Ali I don't know. Is this the first uh, the first Latin American person first Mexican champion for sure right for for the for the North American title right that's the, he's the first one. It's absolutely yeah. It's been black uh, and white all the way through and a Samoan guy. Um. So- Speaking and of two Simone guys, whoa. Yeah, two Simone guys. Um, speaking of reception, Gable Stevenson had his debut on Great American Oof. Bash. And Oof. oh boy. <laughs> I knew it was sketchy. I knew it was sketchy when he like this had one week of build and they put him against Baron Corbin. And it was on the show. And I was like, wait a minute, wasn't he supposed to be on an actual like big show? Once once he was no longer a big deal, I think in the eyes of fans. People also didn't see him as a big deal. Um, Gable Stevenson had a lot of, I think people saw a lot of things over the last two years of like, okay, they're going to go push this guy. He's supposed to be amazing. He's supposed to be great. And you know when WWE wants to make someone great, how the lengths they will go. Yeah. You know the Logan Pauls, the Ronda Rouseys, everybody, the, the, the Pat McAfee's, when they want you to be great, they will go lengths, lengths, lengths to make sure that you're great. Mm-hmm. It's a Gable Stevenson. It's like, go out and get him, kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've never seen such a big misread of who a character was or what he should be than what they did on Sunday. And I put that on the I put that on the creative for great Gable Stevenson because I wasn't really too enthralled with what he did with Eddie Thorpe on that show a couple weeks ago. He seemed really fake. It seemed like he didn't take it very seriously. Um, and, and just in terms of like just being a character, he just looked un- inauthentic on, on that shit. And I was just like, I, I hope this was a one-off. It ended up not being a one-off. Now, I, while I do agree he needs to be on NXT because even what he showed us when he showed up on the main roster wasn't blowing me out of the, you know what I'm saying, blowing anybody out the water. But I think that even more concerning to me than that is the fact that they thought he could go out there and be Kurt Angle 2023. He doesn't look I like I don't know if he should have been on NXT. I, I do. Like, I think skill-wise, yeah, but I really feel like it's the fact that he was on the main roster and is now on NXT is the reason why this whole entire situation has happened. Yes, there's the undercurrent of like all the things that happened in the news, and I completely understand that. But I really think that he lost a lot of like actual like value in the fans' eyes by them kind of like rushing and kind of like doing this, especially on NXT. I'm sure they're like, we could handle this on NXT. It felt like they like wedged him in as opposed to it kind of like being an actual thing. Like this wasn't weeks in advance of like preparing. This shit got made up last week, Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? And they say you're gonna be on the card this, you know the Saturday. So the investment that you usually get with NXT characters, you didn't get with this guy. And I think you can pull off something like that on Monday night raw. Cause there's a lot of like very capable guys that can be able to pull this off with them. You can go with a Chad Gable. You can go with, um, but you got, you know, you, if you got Logan Paul in the main roster and he can already talk and he could already work and you got Gable Stevenson that can only do like none of those things. I think that the the idea is that you go down there and make that motherfucker take them classes. And I I just don't see a world where he's able to create that character and, and Triple H spending that much time on him if he does not have a if he does not have a character created, you know what I'm saying, already on, on the on the uh on that developmental brand. And I don't think it's a bad look for him. I think it's it's a big it's a big look for the show, just in general, to have him on there, but he does not need to be a heel. He turned Baron Corbin face for the first time in years. Because I think people respect the grind of Baron Corbin. And I think, again, like you said, the misread of the NXT thing. Yes, and it looked like he had had 
uh, Gable got that match off of nothing. He looked like he didn't earn any of it. Yeah, essentially. I agree. Well, listen, man. Bobby out here recruiting niggas. (laughs) Here's one for you, Bobby. I mean, I think it's something that could have been used for that kind of situation as well. I think, I don't think NXT, I think, don't get me wrong. If he's starting his journey in NXT, fine, fantastic. But he has to start from nothing. And you don't have any kind of like value. You don't have anything in kind of like the fans' eyes to really go off of. You're seeing them push someone unnaturally, mm-hmm. which NXT has always been about the grind. NXT, you gain the respect from the grind. People are gonna be cheering Mandy someday. You know what I'm saying? Um, when she returns to NXT one day, because of the grind and the work that she put in. Um, it just, everything looked, everything was bad. Bad music, bad gear. I mean, he don't even dress like that when he was showing up on uh, WrestleMania and other shows. Like. Why couldn't he have something cool and some something that just fits his personality outside of just the wrestling shit? Like he needs to be more than just WrestleMan number eight hundred. We've got Gable, uh, we we got, we got the other Gable, Chad Gable. We've got a, a bunch of wrestler make wrestlers. He needs to find a character, and I hope they do that in NXT. I agree. Um, I th- and one more thing here: the Cody Rhodes documentary, American Nightmare, becoming Cody Rhodes. Did you get a chance to check this out? I know it's two hours. It was, it was a little. It was a little lengthy. I watched it while cleaning my damn bathroom. Is this is this documentary one of WWE's best? Um, I would say yes. Yeah, I would say so. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Thank you, Cody. Thank you. Yes, I that was agreed. Diesel. that was Diesel that <laughs> came through. Um. No, I I think without question, one of one of their best documentaries. It, it goes about two hours. I think it's a little bit longer than most of them. Um, I I think just chronicling it from his childhood, which contained a lot of things that we didn't know. One of the biggest things that I didn't know and that made immediate sense when I found it out was that he went he moved to L.A. and was in acting school. Yeah, I, I knew that for a while. I from the OVW days. The biggest misnomer in this is how he overcome his incredible ugliness from the beginning of his career this man was butt ugly he was one of the first <laughs> niggas on near gang bro i think he got some plastic surgery too i is- think so too like you see it right yeah <laughs> i'm like yo you looking a little he's looking a little um a little von wagnery you know what i'm saying <laughs> look crazy at the beginning of his career but i i think that Everything that he's done, everything that he has kind of uh, created for his story, it feels almost like he planned for all of this to happen. Like, that's the way that it feels like to me. Because <laughs> he's a fucking liar. That's why. <laughs> it's, his, it's in his nature. Like, I think he he is an incredible storyteller. And I think that's always been the greatest thing about him. I remember I used to watch those old OVW shows that he was on. They would have it on Torrent's websites. I would download the Torrent from the weekly OVW show, and I would watch it. And I would watch his – he was in a tag team with Sean Spears. Shows you how old Sean Spears is. Um, he was in a tag team with Sean Spears. Um, I forgot what he was called back then. It, it might have been Sean Spears. Um, Sean Spears turns on him. They have this big blow-off feud. It literally ends up like the fucking um, – the feud that he has with Damian Sandow. Mm. But he had this amazing promo. I'm not sure if it's the same dog. But he had this promo that he recorded in his living room with the dog. And I was like, oh, this nigga got it. Like He yeah. got something there. Like He made me believe. And I've always held on to that from Cody. I was like, okay, he can at least draw people in the room. So when they did the Hall of Fame speech and the streets were feeling it, yeah. Vince McMahon was like, hold up. You know, who, you, know who also, you know who wasn't feeling that? Dustin. That nigga was, Dustin. Like, <laughs> he that was, nigga like, was not in the documentary because he would have been like, my dad was an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Like, Dustin was looking at Cody at that Hall of Fame shit like, all right, all right, all right. Bro. All right. All right. He was a good dad to you. To you. Like, like, you, like you, you know, mess with me. Call me uh, all types of words. One um, major part is... Uh, the fact that the elite Kenny Omega, well, actually more more Matt and Nick than Kenny and anyone else, but uh, featured pretty prominently in the documentary. Uh, Cody's come out in the interview since and has said like he talks to the Bucks now more than he's ever talked to them before. 
uh, and and they talk very very candidly and and personally about his time at All Elite Wrestling, and uh, they they don't mince any words about about any of it, except that NDA he got where he can't shit on the company. Yeah. He can't <laughs> talk about why. He, well, he says he says I can't talk about why I left uh, NXT, but he, I can say that it was because of a personal issue, and I think right. that it's, it's easy to see, uh, you know based on who he talks to and who they say, you know, who says they talk to him, that it seems to be a problem with him and Tony that kind of broke the relationship up. He says, I can't talk about why I left. I can talk about the, I can tell you the reasons that have came out aren't the reasons why. And he said the money thing, um, income and talent, I'm assuming the punk thing is what he's really talking about. Yeah, I'm a punk. Um, and then other stuff, but he can say that he had a personal problem with someone and that kind of like led it to go a different kind of way. And yeah, I could see because pretty much Tony's philosophy and Cody's philosophy is completely different. And you can kind of see how, how the shows were actually built when Cody was there. I mean, we could have did this whole episode about the fucking documentary. I think yeah. it has a lot to kind of like go off of and kind of like build off of from a career, even from the vantage standpoint of like, he was like, I'm glad I came in a rookie because you had an opportunity to fail and they can kind of see you grow. Mm-hmm. That's a level of like psychology that a lot of people don't necessarily get, especially when they want to come. We're looking at all these finished products that kind of like come out or like these, these big gimmicks that come out of NXT and they don't really kind of like, you can't really do anything with them because they can't really like lose. They can't really fail. Whereas he had the opportunity to do so. And that helped build up kind of like the value in his career. He was, um, he was so skinny back in the day. How did the, you feel about Cody back in the day? What was your Cody? How did you feel about Cody Rhodes back in the day? His first run in WWE. Created wrestler until dashing came out. He was created wrestler to me. Like he did not feel like a real person. Like it, it's even weird to me to see the black hair Cody Rhodes because it's like boy, that boy was ugly. <laughs> he was he did not look good. He did not have a good look. Dashing to me was like the first time he looked like a star, and then the mask thing I thought was really dope. That no, I hated the dashing. Like put a little put a little uh, lemon drops on your cuticles for. <laughs> I, I but but the thing is is that you totally felt like that's how he was in real life. You know what I mean? You definitely see it in his character. Like his character now is so many elements of what he was before, and I think seeing that actualized in this documentary is like oh he does that still when he's cody now and you know he had the all of the all of the pieces of his character kind of make up who he is now i i think the biggest thing that that i saw from this is that like and i think triple h says it best in the documentary is that there's no way that the cody story could have ended where he was at and i, I know triple h says in, in a in a you know competitor or what did, what did he say like a, a secondary um, company secondary, yeah secondary company like it, it, he's like is he's not wrong like it feels as though cody was meant to be where he is like even if none of the elite ever come over to the wwe it's fine that cody came over because he even in AEW, he felt like he was doing wwe shit and it just didn't work over there do you ever think cody will go back to AEW? no no absolutely not i I think you can see it I can't see only that. because there's some sort of there's value of him wrapped within the company. I mean, don't get me wrong, the ba- the bag is tremendous in WWE. He's not he's not going like you you fake could see it. I could see it if if he fucking they would have to do so many things wrong to upset him. They, he'd have to be feeling like he was feeling when he before he left for him to leave. But it. It, I, you I, don't I, feel like it's like a Braun going back to the Cavs kind of deal? <laughs> no, because he actually didn't start in AEW. <laughs> no, but I mean he started AEW is essentially I mean he didn't start in AEW, don't get me wrong, but it's like he started AEW like a prominence of it. He has so much of himself wrapped up within the company now by the time he goes back it'll probably all d- dusted and gone. But he has so much of himself wrapped up within the company. I think he still has something with some little stake in the company if I'm going to keep it a buck of there, There's um, no equity in him coming back there other than a pop because they're not selling out the arenas or not doing the buildings that they're doing in WWE. Like he is to me the closest, like I feel like he will be a lifer. I just don't see like there's, there's no, there's to me, there's no use for him to go back and, and work with who? Like, like there's no one there, there for him to even work with even down the line. Cause it's going to be the same people that they were, that were there when he left that he already. Yeah. Worked. But he, 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 um, he limited him, lit him. He limited himself a lot in AEW because that's what he felt like he needed to do. 
Bro, uh, going from Roman Reigns being inventing WrestleMania back to AEW just doesn't even feel like something that I this don't this don't even feel like <laughs> a real conversation we could have. There's just no way. Cody a different nigga. I don't know. Yeah, he a different <laughs> nigga that left a company that he saw was gonna go in the trending in the direction that it's going now, and he said it it was gonna do that, and it's continued to go in that direction ever since he said that in his last promo, and went to a company that that now he they, they see his value to me like i said the aw thing was a gambit for him to show wb how much he didn't need them but how much they needed him to come back in order to to, to get the equity that he already had built because he mm. what he did was he took all those people from aw that were watching for him and he took them over there to WWE with him all the kids everything he took them all the way over there with him you, you they're not gonna go the other way <laughs> and we've seen this I meals like they don't go they don't go backwards when people go to aw no one does i mean no one does yeah yeah but no one does like he don't he's he's gonna go right back into that snake that snake pit that booed him out the first time he'll get one pop and they'll be tired of him in, the, in three months he, and, and and he won't have the support and those kids and all that stuff they're they're gonna they're gonna say oh well we like seth rollins too so we're gonna stay over here that's what it's going to be. He's, he's got the potential to be the biggest baby face, which is something that he could not do in AEW and not in the way that he's doing it here in WWE and not with the, with the, with the support that they, they put behind him in this documentary, as you can see. And they let him talk about all time. Like admitting he was drinking on the job to me is a wild thing to, to, to put in a documentary and they let him do that. Hey, start us. <laughs> <laughs> drinking whiskey with Gatorade is a crazy man thing. <laughs> Come on, man. Some Cody shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's get to SummerSlam. Let's let's uh let's let's predict this show. Yeah. Coming Big to show. You, coming to you live from Ford Field in Detroit, Michigan. Eight uh matches on the card. I think this is like the the heaviest show that Triple H has done since last year's SummerSlam. This is the official year anniversary meals of, of Triple H kind of taking over the book here. Uh, we got quite a stack car here of a, of a lot of matches that, um, like I said earlier, that have been kind of built for like the last couple of months. And, and I think that that's what would been one of the biggest differences between uh, last year's SummerSlam and most shows that they do is that some of these feuds have been going on since Royal Rumble. Some of them have been going on since Mania. And it, they've, they've seemed to, to make them uh, make a lot of sense. And to me, the, the, the TV has been good enough to supplement a lot of these feuds. I... I like this card a lot. I really, really do. That's all I'll say about it. I know I was about to say something wild. I wasn't. It felt like it. If I was like, oh, here we go. Ah, <laughs> oh, here we go. Back in trash. Oh. Right. Well, what was your feelings on that before we start? A lot of people are upset with the. Well, I won't say a lot of people. I'll just say people within that bubble are upset. I looked, <laughs> I looked at the Becky and Trish thing and I said, <clears throat> they are they are increasing the value, and Triple H has done this for the past year with, that he's been on TV. He's increasing the value of TV main events. There's a possibility that this the the Becky Trish match could main event in Canada, and that'd be a big moment. And I honestly feel like that's what they're going to do. But giving more equity and, and more support towards having people tune in every week is how they've gotten Raw to nearly 2 million viewers uh, every single week since they've been doing things like that. And so it, to me, it makes sense to give you a hook to tune in to Raw in two weeks in Canada to see Becky versus Trish. So my thoughts are they do this kind of quite frequently, actually, where there are some matches that can't necessarily make the card, but you give them the moment anyway. And the first time I remember seeing this, you're going to laugh at this, was The Undertaker versus The Great Collie. They had this feud over months where Undertaker just kept getting his ass whooped by The Great Collie. It was terrible as an internet fan. You were disgusted, throwing up in your mouth, all this other shit. <laughs> um, that feud blew off on the SmackDown before SummerSlam. <laughs> Which means The Undertaker, of all people, was not on SummerSlam. Yeah. That was the first notion. I was probably like 16, 17 years old seeing that. And realizing like, oh, okay, not everything makes SummerSlam. Um, again, there's an opportunity for a big main event that you can build up towards. And then there's an opportunity for a lot of other people to be featured on SummerSlam. I mean, you look at the card and you see, I mean, Jay Uso's in a singles program. Ricochet, who is 
really not been on a major pay-per-view in quite some time is on this. Shayna Baszler is on this. You have the Battle Royale where all y'all niggas wanted LA Knight to go, yeah, 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 he's going to be on SummerSlam. <laughs> he's going to be on SummerSlam. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The Intercontinental title is on SummerSlam. Like, I think we're at this point. I think Becky is at this point where she knows she's a big enough star and secured in her position within the company where she doesn't need to be on everything and can still feel like a major star. Mm-hmm. And I think Trish Stratus as well, same kind of boat. And I think you, you, we're going to get a really big main event when we do that in Canada. I mean, yeah. I think Canada is the perfect spot for it. I just don't, I just don't get the pearl clutching over Becky Lynch and I, but she was there last year. She was there two years in a row. She was there when she wasn't supposed to be there. Exactly. Like I, I think I think it's perfectly fine. I think that she is in a storyline that has been mostly built on TV, other than the other than Saudi. It has been mostly done on TV. And then and then money in the bank. That's it. I think it's gonna be a great matchup nonetheless. And to yeah. be honest with you, if this was on SummerSlam, it would have never it would have led to the same result, which was the main event in Canada. So I think you would have wasted a slot by essentially saying, like, we're going to do Becky versus Trish. It's going to end in the schmas, and then we're going to have the rematch then. Just take out the schmas. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remember people being upset. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I remember people being upset at the cage match, and then they, they made good on that. This, this isn't even a make good because they also never announced that the rematch was going to be happening on SummerSlam. And, and I want to be clear. They never said it was happening on SummerSlam. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Same thing with the Rhea, Rhea match. Rhea's not on SummerSlam, but guess what? She's Rhea fucking Ripley. Yeah, she could be Who anywhere. Fuck she cares. She, she, yeah, and she's anywhere. She's everywhere. She's everywhere I want to be. I know that for sure. So, yeah. SummerSlam card here. SummerSlam Battle Royal. Uh, only people that have been confirmed on this have been LA Knight, Sheamus, Tommaso Ciampa, Shinsuke Nakamura, Otis, and Chad Gable. Um, there's, just, there's some big kind of names. That, you know what's funny to me? Is that a couple years ago this would have seemed very inconsequential because a lot of the mid card was doing nothing at the time, so it would just be people that we'd only see in these types of matches. But it's really fun to me that these are people that have been featured on TV constantly, so anybody could realistically win out of those guys. Like even when I announce them, I'm like any of these guys could win because they've been featured pretty prominently. This is a slim gym battle royal. <laughs> Fire. So you know the, the the you know the branding is there, the cross energy is there. Surely someone will get their macho man on and do something in this thing. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Why not? You know what I'm saying? I love a little battle royal, especially a slim gym battle royal. Come on, man! Please, please let this LA is, Knight win. Please, LA please Knight only. Win. LA Knight only big brand opportunities for his major matches. You know what I'm saying? United yeah. States title match brought to you by Dove Soap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, let's make it happen. LA Knight, please win. Uh, that's all I got to say about that. Ronda Rousey nah, versus Shayna Baszler. I mean, I got to see who else. I got to see who else is in there. I, I could care less if LA Knight wins or not. I care. I mean, the internet discourse I can go away with, which is why I'd probably want him to win. Um, but I want to see who else is in this match. Shayna Baszler versus Ronda Rousey in an MMA rules match. I'm very intrigued to see how they're going to pull this off uh, without an octagon. (laughs) It is going to be terrible. (laughs) In a stadium, I just don't know how that type of thing is going to go over, especially a worked MMA match. We've seen this go badly. That's that's really why it's going to be terrible. I, we, me and Cyrus reviewed an ECW show that had an MMA rules match in, involving Taz, and it just didn't go over well in a small room. I don't know how it's going to go over well in a big room. I'm waiting for them to prove they had that wrong. Samoa Joe Kurt Angle one too. Remember that? Oh yeah, they did. They in the Impact, right? Yeah, yeah. Where they were, where they, they taped their feet up, and I said, "Oh, yeah, they're serious." <laughs> they take oh, their yeah. feet. Look at that. Oh god. Um. It, Cool they, they said it was one of the best Chuck. matches in TNA history. Good lord. Okay. Nice cap. Uh, they 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 um that was when people were had a, such a hard on for like MMA like and I was just like I don't get it like I don't get why MMA is like this because Kurt thing. Angle always wanted to do it and then realized he was too fucking old and it was too fucking late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he booked him himself in a, a UFC kind of match. Um. Yeah, I don't know. This might work well 
if one of the competitors didn't know mixed martial arts, then you can WWE it a little bit. But since both of them are actually MMA fighters, <laughs> oh god, God bless. Um, it's got to be Shayna, right? Like this is the reason why this whole thing is going on. Yeah, I, I, I. From all we've does been Ronda hearing... Rousey want to get choked out again? <laughs> Uh, I think she's fine with me. We're, we're putting over Shayna here. I'm just interested in how the the um the match is gonna go. I, I would think it would be really cool if they came out with trainers and stuff like that, and they had like towel, you know, the towels and all that shit. But um, I, I will say that I did really, really enjoy the video package on Monday Night Raw this week. I, I thought that it was emotional. I, I thought we saw a side of Shayna that we had never seen before, and I was like, mm. yo, like, I felt it. Like I, I really felt what she said. And I was like, where has this been? I was like, fucking finally. You know what I mean? Like, I really loved the emotion that she showed and um, the story. Like, we, I feel like Mills, Shane has been there for, what, eight years? We learned more about her in two minutes than we know, we learned about her in eight years with that one video, the, the second part of the video uh, vignettes that they did last night. I agree. I agree. Uh, I, I got Shana winning here, but I would not be surprised to see this get one more match um, in a month or two. Mm. Um, Intercontinental Championship match. Gunta with Ludwig Kaiser and Benji versus. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say who Drew McIntyre think he is? <laughs> think of him as two all- Raws. <laughs> I know what the fuck. <laughs> I was like, who this nigga think he is? He swear he me. Um. <laughs> How is, Gunther, how is Gunther doing all the promo work in this match? <laughs> Brother, why they had Chad Gable in a whole three segment? That's the match niggas want to see. <laughs> I was that like, is- you got your food taken. Okay, now, n- bear with me here. Were you confused okay. with why they did that? <laughs> I was confused. I was confused because they said it's going to be a five-minute match. And I was like, oh, okay. And then the five minutes were up. And I was like, oh, it's over. And then they said, nah, continue the match. And I was like, what? <laughs> it's five. It's a, I thought it was a five minute rule match. He couldn't last with you in the ring for five minutes. Ch- Chad Gable did an amazing job. That it was, was great. I, match. I think if you're going to be setting up an opponent for the next thing Gunther does, then I think that that's cool. Um, I just but. don't know why they did it on Monday. <laughs> like, yeah, I feel like you give away because I don't think Drew's winning this match, and I think they gave it away on Monday. That's why they did that. I mean, I would imagine so. I don't know what Drew was doing, bro. What did Drew have to do where he couldn't be on Raw? What did he have to do where he couldn't be at work? Isn't he in? A, oh, he's filming a movie. That's right. I just looked it up. He's filming a movie. That's why. Is he? Oh damn! He oh, wait, he no, ain't on the stag after. Yeah, he can't be filming a movie. I don't know what. I don't know mm. what. I need Sean Ross Sapp to fill in the clues for me. Uh, he don't know. Uh, I, 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 I think <laughs> it's a great match. I don't see Gunther winning this yet, bro. I don't. I don't. I don't. Are not winning. I don't see Gunther losing yet, bro. I. I just don't. Nah, there's, there's... They got the record waiting for him. You know. He could beat the they record maybe on the. Through, not... Is the last day of the record fall on like a raw or like a pay per view day? That's that's. The I think most it's close to. I think it's close to the next pay per view. To be honest with you. Yeah, um, I would do it around. There. You 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 got to beat Honky Tonk. Fuck that nigga. You got to be Honky Tonk. So I I hey man, for this get that honky out of here. I know that's right. <laughs> for the sanctity of this uh of this title. I will say that that Drew is going to lose here and he'll he'll get it back uh, in the fall. I but I, my only issue is that like who does Drew go after or who does he face if if this goes wrong? And I I just don't know with the way that Raw set up right now and Matt Riddle's already a loser, so it's like it can't be anybody else. So, um, the most viral match on SummerSlam, mm-hmm. Ricochet versus mm-hmm. Logan Paul. I'll say this. I thought that they came off a lot better on Monday this week than they have in the past two weeks. Um, I thought Ricochet came off a lot more comfortable this week than he has in the past two weeks. Hmm. I I did. I did. 
Um, I feel I am concerned that they are going to be trying to do too much to make the match viral, though. I think they got one big spot planned, and I think that's like, I don't think they're going to do like a million big ass spots. But if I had to look for the blueprint for this match, I would say Ricochet Will Ospreay. Mm. I think that's what they're trying to recapture with this kind of moment. It's a big budget Ricochet Will Ospreay match. The match that had everyone talking, the match that had so many opinions, the match that had so many different things. Um, I like that they added a little element of the Samantha thing to it. That was green. <laughs> yeah. I like that he didn't say, like, you're going to be saying my name because this nigga is also now engaged. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he is not wilding out that way. But again, um, another angle to Ricochet that we would have never known, you know, that we didn't know about. Or, I mean, obviously, if you're online, you knew about it. But, like, that a lot of people maybe at home didn't know about um, that they introduced to give these characters a, a reason, a purpose to fight. Mm. And um, I thought that worked really well for me. I am praying, Meals. I am praying that Ricochet comes out of this. I don't think he's going to win this match, mind you. But I am praying that he comes out of this and I'm going to, I'm going to call it right now. He should beat Gunther. Okay. He should be Gunther. He, he lost to Gunther. So <laughs> it'd be great if it comes around. I'm not sure who's going to, listen, I honestly don't think Gunther is going to lose anytime. So <laughs> I'm going to keep it a buck. They, with you. they can't have another Roman. Like, um, I, I Roman. think he's going to be intercontinental champion and he's going to have won the Royal Rumble. I think that's how you elevate that Intercontinental Championship to a whole new fucking level. Okay. Oh, um, okay. That makes sense. Well, he had to lose it before uh, Mania, though. Yeah, probably. Um, so mad when he gets like a distraction finish or something. <laughs> hey, man. Tough shit. Uh, anyway. Is this a potential match of the night for you? Ah, oh, it's going to be tough. It's gonna be, be tough. tough. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of niggas on this show. I just um, looked, I just looked up and I said, like, "Ooh, this is gonna be tough." It's gonna have a great moment in this match. I'm almost sure of it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I got I, I got I got Logan winning. He hasn't won yet. He has to win. Yeah, just, I kind of Logan kind of does have to win. This is the one person he can actually realistically beat. And and Ricochet be fine afterwards. I mean, if they don't have plans for Ricochet afterwards, Logan is definitely winning. They could have plans for Ricochet. He could still lose here. Come on, Mills. He could go against uh, Shinsuke like they were looking like they were planning on doing before the Logan thing happened. Just say, just say Logan. I know that's your man. Just say Logan. I picked Logan. I picked Logan. I All said, right. yeah, Logan got to win. Next up, triple threat match for the WWE Women's Championship. Asuka versus Charlotte Flair versus Bianca Belair. This is my uh this is my like kind of sleeper match of the night type contender, but this is also like with Charlotte Flair, I don't know what we about to get with her on Saturday. I'm not as into this feud as I thought I was going to be. Um so I'm going to say and then where was Asuka? Like come on. Was she even on SmackDown? Um, she was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She was. She was. She was. Okay, yo, in a pre-tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm picking Oscar to win. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not that excited about this match, but I'm open to being pleased. But I feel like Charlotte Flair's bag isn't a triple threat. Yeah, it is. Well, she could lay down for a minute and then do a big spot and then lay down some more. Um, do you, do you think we see a, a cash in? I would hope so. That would be awesome. A year after debuting and you cash in go crazy. It seems that like the, like the, the, uh, the stars are aligning for that to make sense here to, to me, because I think that gives you a really nice uh, feud in the fall between EO and Oscar in my opinion, but um, we'll see what happens. I, I mean, I, 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 there's always the, that. there's always a possibility of, um, there's always a possibility of the cash in. And I think it's more likely with EO 
And I, I would just honestly wouldn't want Io to hold it that damn long. I think it would make more sense for her to just cash it in. I think a month's good enough. She's, she's still like the second longest holder of the of the briefcase. We're only holding it a month, so that that that's dope to me. Um, Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. How about that video package on Monday? <laughs> They were like, what more can we say? And it was like, all right, well. A lot. I guess we, a lot, <laughs> apparently. Um, great stuff. Cody has to win this one. I mean, the the, the documentary told me so at this point. <laughs> <laughs> this, the Cody campaign is, is, is nearing into the fall, the fall months where I feel like they're going to have to get the, you know, put their heads down and, and kind of figure out a fall feud for him that leads into the to the Rumble. Because at this point, Mills, we've got to find a path for Cody to get back to Roman. And I think that's the story that you tell. I honestly don't think he's long for Raw. I think, to me, you do let him kind of face off against Seth again. I think that would be a pretty cool kind of fall feud for him or do something with, with, with somebody on the show. I... I, I or Drew McIntyre, which could uh, realistically also be a really good feud for him. I, I'm, I have a feeling it's going to be Drew, but yeah, I don't know. Cody, it, it just is. I'm interested to see how this match will go. I thought there was going to be a stipulation. There is not. It's a regular ass match. Um, well, Cody hey. wants a damn dog collar match and i'm just they're just probably like no we have a sponsor nigga. <laughs> okay yeah i don't know cody i got cody here too i, th- I think it'll be the best of the three matches I think they, they're they perfectly set up to have the best of their three matches here, and I think that they should. I, the thing is, Mills, is that even though it's the same regular-ass match, you know they're about to be breaking the rules. So it it it, it probably will be no DQ or, or whatever the hell they want it to be. Um, World Heavyweight Championship match, Seth freaking Rollins versus Finn Balor. This is going to be fun. Uh, and, and again, them meeting at SummerSlam again, there's a lot of, there's a lot of parallels here. I, I think that this feud has been... Um, the right few for Seth to kick off his his journey with. But I think we said this on the show as well. I don't think there's anything wrong here with letting Finn Balor get one. And then he drops it again later or something. Or, or Damian cashes in on him. Like, what do you think? Yeah, no, I kind of want Finn to win. And I'm actually going to pick him to win. Because I think he should win. Um, I think, I mean, not everyone can go home happy. But I really do think that Finn Balor is going to win. Oh, that must be Amazon. Um, <laughs> I really think Finn Balor is going to win this match. What say you? I, I think Finn should. Um, however, I know that Seth is probably looking to have a, a, a at least a six-month reign with this title. I, I, I just don't think that you can go back to this match again if Seth actually beats Finn again. But I also kind of want them to get away from the Judgment Day. So we'll see kind of what happens with, with how this shakes out. I think if you do have Finn win the title, you could realistically stretch out a couple more months with the Judgment Day versus uh, Seth Rollins, and that make a lot of sense. But they're also kind of doing the tease with the Judgment Day stuff. And like the more I think about it, I'm like, do you really want to have two big factions, one of them being like your biggest faction since the Bloodline and the Judgment Day, actually break up after, you know, at the same time as the Bloodline kind of breaks up? I just don't see it happening right now. Unless they I don't think out. judgment. I think I think Judgment Day goes through changes, but I don't know if they're gonna actually break up. Uh, yeah, completely. No, I absolutely agree. Like I, I, I think that's what I was saying. Like, do they, you know, do they shift some members around, or, or you know, how how do they deal with that? Um, but I, I would, I think it would be cool for Finn to win. I, I think it's a cool vision, a cool image to see Judgment Day all with titles or or in the Money in the Bank. I think that's a that's a big indictment and a, and a big uh, vote of confidence in that group. And the fact that they got over in just a year, you know what I'm saying, from where they were. I'm not saying Finn needs to have the title for a really long time, but him having the title, I think, legitimizes that crew and gives all of them something to do and, and gives them a, a fresh face and a fresh, fresh slate of other challengers because then you could bring in Cody. You could bring in Drew. You still have Seth. That's a great baby face versus heel dynamic there for me. What say you? I think there's 
No, I'm trying to think, like, I mean, the benefit, what would be the benefit of Seth winning? He continues on this kind of, like, awesome run that he's on. I think he ends up world champion by the time he hit WrestleMania anyway. Not that he wins the thing, but I think he ends up world champion nonetheless. Um, But Finn, I feel like, really kind of, like, needs it in this moment. And I think it's more of a vehicle for a story, but I think that's okay. Because Finn Balor is also, like, very credible in this opportunity. And I think this is a new championship. This is a new regime. I think you can give it to Finn. Um, And I think he deserves it, to be honest with you. He's grinded through a lot. He's been through a lot. Yeah, He's had to sit on his hands a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, he has been the subject of unfavorable creative or just no creative at all. And this is quite honestly is seemingly the peak of his WWE career. And it just feels like there, there, I don't think there's a time I said this shit with Cody too at WrestleMania. I think there isn't a time different, that different, doesn't, you know, different situation though. Yeah, but I still said it. Um, I think there isn't a time that's better for, Finn to win this title than now. So I think he should win, and I'm actually going to pick him to win. I'm picking Finn Balor to become world heavyweight champion. I'll pick Finn. Match. I'll pick Finn too, because with Seth, it ain't about the having a long title reign to me. It's about the, it's like <laughs> just him winning it many times. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he could technically win it a lot of times. He could win it back and become a two time champion before Mania. Like it's about the chase. And I think that you want to keep Seth fresh. And I think him chasing Finn, eventually having to run into Damian Priest, getting the title for a while, and then getting it back from Damian and the Judgment Day being irrev- irre- uh, irrevocably broken because of that is like is a good story to me. And I think that I- I'm going to trust H here because I think that more often than not he's going f- he's gone for the good story more than you know just the status quo. So I'm, I'm hoping Finn wins, and if he doesn't, I don't know. I because again, that makes it look like the Judgment Day is going to split. And I don't think they want to do that. Uh, finally here, we got the main event, tribal combat for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship and the the beads, the tribal chief beads. Hey, man. Puka Shell, uh, Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso. He ain't wear them beads on first take, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call 45 minutes. I, I think that a lot of things might get cut short for this for this to be lengthy as is, but... Roman loves the spectacle matches at SummerSlam. I think Absolutely. we will, I think we will see no less here. I think this is going to be a fucking movie <laughs> because in my eyes this is kind of the the wrap up of the Uso part of the bloodline thing. I think that they should move on after this. I think Jimmy will come back during this match. Um I, I think there will be some solo stuff. So what what do you think the solo thing is going to be during this match? Um he's going to get kicked in the face by Jimmy. <laughs> I think that's the kind of it. I think it's kind of like even the sides a little bit. I really hope there isn't a Jimmy turns on Jay thing. Um, what do you saying? That? <laughs> I don't know because they talked about it once, um, one in the feud with one another. Uh, but if that's how they extend the bloodline stuff, that is not what they should do. That, like, I think it, I think it goes off on its own thing. Not like Jimmy joins the bloodline. I think just Jimmy is like I'm my own nigga now. Um, but they need tag teams, so they shouldn't do that. This is true, but I don't know. We've usoed everything, <laughs> so uh, you take a break. That don't mean they gotta like <laughs> split I mean, up. The the money is you take the break and bring them back together. So they just. It, I mean, it, I mean, like a proper whatever. I'm not arguing the break part anyway. The match itself, um, I think, is going to be yeah. Once again, a movie. It's going to be very, very long. It's going to be very, very um, emotional. Super kick, yeah, super kick based. Um, well, not well, not super kick based. Now it's a spear. Jay has a spear. He's added a new move to his uh, to his arsenal. I mean, that's Roman Reigns' spear. Uh, I honestly, but if, the, like- if there is anybody who I feel like Roman would drop it to, <laughs> it would be Jay. <laughs> um, because I feel like just in general, he's been, I mean, I think the family has been the most important thing. He's been elevating his family more than anything. So if there was a chance that he drops it, I think it would be the J. 
but I'm picking Roman. Got to go Roman. I think Solo's leaving. I think Solo's leaving. I think that Puka shell gets broken also. It gets torn apart by the end of the match. I could see Roman being the Mad King by himself by the end of this. Um, and the bloodline kind of carrying on as its own thing and Roman, you know, not needing anyone. I don't know how they stretch that. Well, he's going to probably disappear to like November <laughs> at this point or, or whenever they go to Saudi again. So we'll see. But um, I, I, I think that, I think this is really where it implodes. I, I can't see, I, I just don't think there's much for Solo to do if Roman is going to take such a long break, right? It's, 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 he's going to have to kind of establish himself on his own. If, if that's him going against his brothers or his brothers and, and him being a tandem or, or a trio, sorry, um, that could also be a, a path that you could take it. But I think at this point, this to me is the closing the chapter of the bloodline part of the Roman Reigns storyline and him leading into, I don't know what, but I think that it ending the way that it started with the Jey Uso match to me is so poetic and is really special. And I think that, again, as this title reign and this whole storyline winds down, I think we talked about this on the show as well. We want to appreciate where it's been and appreciate what it is. And I think through all these chapters, it kind of ending on this moment, whether he wins it or not, it ending on this moment of Jey Uso finally getting this opportunity again. I think it's just so awesome and it's something that we just don't see very often meals. Like we just don't see stories come around full circle like this. And that's what I'm really more looking forward to seeing more than anything. I agree. I agree. 100%. Um, but yeah, that is the show. I think it's going to be amazing that I missed anything. No, I didn't miss anything. Eight matches. Um, we, we, we should be seeing some, some fire here. My match of the night contender. I mean, I, I, I think it's gotta be Roman. But I, I could see um, I could see Ricochet and Logan Paul or Gunther and Drew kind of squeaking past as well. So we'll see how that shakes out on Saturday um, at SummerSlam. And yeah, we are, we are firmly going into the fall season of uh, WWE programming with Triple H's first year going to a second year now uh, as, a, as head of creative. He usually pulls up all the stops on these big four shows. So we'll see what happens on Saturday. Um, but yeah, that is the show. Mills, is there anything else you want to you want to tackle before we get out of here? Hmm. No, but you may be making an appearance on the lookout pretty damn soon. I will be. I will be. <laughs> I can't wait to talk about it. I, I, I've, uh, I've, I've got my notes. I've got all of my uh, all my material ready because this is my big moment, and I can't wait. This to is do your. It. I can't wait for, to have you back on. Um, talking about the Gundam Witch for Mercury. Uh, so if you're an anime fan or you're a Gundam fan or any of the fans, um. Make sure to tune into the lookout next week. But yeah, we're gonna we will talk again. Actually, shit. No, sometimes on a Saturday. I forgot. God, I love Nikon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have plenty to enjoy. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all I got to say. All right. Well, for uh, you know, make sure you check out the war report this week with Quan and Cyrus. They'll be talking about everything going on with AEW as well. Uh, and then check us out next week as we talk about the fallout from SummerSlam and anything else that happens in the meantime. So for Meals, I'm Justin. Thank you guys for listening to The A Show, and we'll see you next week.